Spunko were also pioneers in the animation world, having created some of the first internet cartoons. 1997 was also the year of the goddamn George Licker program. As is, we follow the day-to-day -day life of the studio's red-blooded American, doing things like looking after his nephew, Jimmy the Idiot Boy. What we have here doesn't have a plot. We're introduced to who's going to be in the series, ending on a to-be-continued after George left Jimmy alone with Slab and Ernie for them to beat him up. Then there was a short where he comes out to ask the viewers to demand more cartoons from... Tower Records? How is that supposed to work? And a Christmas short where Jimmy makes out with an elf girl in a box Sody Pop got for him. If she likes him, wouldn't it make more sense for her to be in the box? After George separates them and takes their tongues away, they all sing carols. There's not a lot to comment on, so I'll just move on to the characters. The show gives Licker a caring and patient side when he's with Jimmy, doing things like allowing him to figure out how to pray before a meal and helping with his hair. I have a lot of respect for him as a father figure now. But then there was his slightly racist comment about Donald Bastard when he referred to him as a foreigner because he couldn't understand him. Jimmy in this series doesn't speak or do anything else except look stupid and wet his pants, which makes Sody Pop's attraction to him baffling. When we first see her, her nipples poke through her tank top. Knowing that she's a teenager, I feel gross looking at her and I struggle to find a screenshot of her without them sticking out. Anyway, she comes by to show him her new bikini, and the sight of a stylized head on a realistic looking body is weird. Her invitation for them to go to the beach is thrown away by George Licker when he sends her packing. Mr. Licker, my respect for you is just going up and up. Way to look out for your boy like that! The last characters we meet here are his other nephews, Slab and Ernie. He has fun with them, roughhousing, before leaving them to look after Jim. They then proceed to beat him up. These two came off as bullies in the little time they had on screen. Outside of George, Licker, and Jimmy, who have the most screen time, everyone else isn't given enough time to leave an impact. The humor on display goes along the lines of boring and stupid. This contained instances of faces on things. There was a sequence at the beginning with anthropomorphic animals and objects acting giddy while doing morbid things, and something that would show up in later Spunko projects, drawn out sequences of mundane actions that fall under boring than funny. Spunko had used one of the earliest versions of Flash. It was so primitive that they couldn't have fluid animation or proper lip sync. These cartoons sport solid colors and gradients on the off occasion. Another thing about the program is that the sound is worse than mine. He just ran out of gas. He's got to get in shape. I keep telling him he's got to eat better, too. Like me. Here, you need a little tonic, son. Easy. Easy now. Except this effect is intentional and not a limitation of the software. And sometimes the music would drown out the dialogue, like when Sodi introduced herself. Uh. Stay away from that boy! He's a minor! This would pop up in another project they do. The goddamn George Licker program was boring, and every other character apart from the eponymous man was forgotten as soon as they left the scene. Its content just couldn't overcome the limitations of the software they worked with. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a question I want to ask you. It's one that's been on my mind for a while, and I'm dying to know the answer. What are P-Boners for? No, really. It's a cartoon where Slab and Ernie get visible P-Boners and walk around with them exposed, peeing on all sorts. There's not a lot to say about this one. It was stupid, yet it was short. But who wants to see the penises of adolescent boys? Their last original internet cartoon came in 1998 with Weekend Pussy Hunt. Cigarettes the Cat, played by Eddie Fitzgerald, mocks the wrong dog when he laughs at Dirty Dog, first played by John Kay, and replaced by someone else whose name I can't find anywhere because there is no way John could screen like this. Oh my do! And I don't care if it takes
takes on a different tone midway through, but until then it has a very unassuming vibe, much like the goddamn George Licker program. During this part we get a drawn out sex joke where Dirty Dog is humping Jimmy's leg and it actually gets pregnant and gives birth to foot babies, a gag that would be reused in adult party cartoon. Then there's a long drawn out sequence of Cigarettes the Cat making fun of him, followed by a chase scene where the ending with him hiding in the rubbish can makes no sense when Dirty Dog was right behind him. When Cigarettes and his alley cat friend, Bugs Pussy, find out who the dog is, the tone of the series gets dark. Dirty Dog, who was minding his own business, chewing on a bone George Licker gave him, Dirty demanding he stop laughing at him is reminding me of my last years of primary school. We and Cigarettes later find out how much of a mangy mutt he is by chastising his brother for dating a leg and spending his money on it, though I think that's the brother's fault. Beating him up for daring to stand up to him, ignoring his first wife, the mother of his children, when she challenged his need to chase down those who laugh at him. He does get approval from his mistress, who's more than willing to enable him. Later on, he'd steal cigarettes his girlfriend in a very baffling and hard to watch scene, and slap her on his way out with her saying she deserved it. All that's missing now is for him to get into politics and tax everyone out of their homes and clothes, and I'll want to have this dog euthanized. The second half makes the stuff that doesn't fit the new tone, like his brother's girlfriend being a severed leg and Dirty Dog mentioning how long he'll chase him, all weekend, during a screaming fit, funny. That's something that makes me wonder how many takes the actor did and how raw his voice must have been afterwards. So when Cigarettes bites off more than he could chew when he finds out about Dirty and his friends, family and girlfriend all turn on him because of that magey mutt, he becomes sympathetic because of his situation. And he was the guy who laughed at a dog for being a good boy. Weekend Pussy Hunt came off as the precursor to cartoons that start out pretty underwhelming, but get better after a while. This one had more potential than the goddamn George Licker program because there was more going on and more that could have been done. Unfortunately, MSN stopped production before they completed the intended 16, leaving only 12. Well, ain't that a shame.